Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Line Change, the NHL betting podcast from the Action Network, and welcome to our final episode for this season. Well, I shouldn't say that. It is our final episode covering any games for the season. We'll cover game seven of the Stanley Cup final tonight. We're also going to do a draft episode, um, and it might just be me, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> but we will we will be doing uh, game seven tonight. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into the weeds with game seven, try to come out of here with a uh, a bunch of bets to celebrate the end of the 2023-2024 National Hockey League season. Uh, so we're going to try to hit every angle we can think of for this standalone game on Monday night in Sunrise, Florida, between the Florida Panthers, who, if you haven't heard, blew a 3 nothing series lead in the Stanley Cup final against the Edmonton Oilers. This game is essentially a pick em. I'm just going to call it a pick em. Some places have the, the Panthers as a slight favorite, but uh, flip a coin, total five and a half with a heavy, heavy juice to the under, as you'd imagine. This game is going to be bet by everybody that uh, bets on sports, I would say. I think that this is one of those rare times where all sports, all the eyeballs will be glued to a National Hockey League. It's a Game 7. It's a Stanley Cup Final. It's a obviously compelling series. The best player in the world is playing in it. So is Connor McDavid. And um, we have a lot uh, to get into. I mean, Kyle Oposo is, is the, the best player <laughs> in the world, obviously. Uh, Who's the best player in the world? If you said Oposo. best player in the world. <laughs> um, Raymond Lomberg. No, he's up there, though. He sh- certainly is up there. Um, so I think it's it's fun from that perspective, too. Like, you're going to see tons of people talking about, um, you know, betting into it. Maybe it'll affect the market. Maybe it won't. But the you know the amount of casual money I assumed that that money would come pumping in on the Oilers, considering what they've just done. But Nick, um, I don't think that's why you'll be making the bet you like. Uh, yeah, I like the Oilers in this game. I think that at this point it feels like you're asking a lot of questions of the Panthers to figure out all the flaws that they've had the last the last few games here. Obviously, they're going to clean it up to some extent. I think we know it's going to be a pretty tight game. But it feels like there's too many concerns with their defense off the rush. They're not getting anything off the power play. I just it it seems like there's so many things that they need to get right. And these th- I don't really believe in the game to game momentum. I just think that we've seen a three game sample of the Oilers looking pretty dominant. So I think at this point, I think if you're playing a side, you play the Oilers on the road. And to give ourselves a pat on the back to fi- uh, finish off what's been a really good postseason playing road teams, I think this is another spot to put that trend into play and consider that I don't really buy the home ice here. I think they're nervy. I think it's another one where both teams are just going to be fully ready to go. Everyone's on the same travel. I don't really think it changes anything. And I think road teams have lost the last three game sevens in the cup final. I know they've done good historically, but I think that... Um, I mean, ultimately, I don't really rate either of those trends, but I think the overall point is I don't really rate the home ice either, which is a big reason why this game is still Edmonton at minus 105. And then, yeah, the same thing, another good piece of advice we gave out that hopefully some people used is the last game seven, we said that all we've seen how this is going to go every every game, the under is going to trend really heavy, and that's exactly what's happened here. And I think now, I don't I don't know if you can do minus 155 to play the under five and a half. I think at that point you kind of just, I feel like it's kind of just priced right, but. Yeah. In terms of the game uh, and a money line pick, um, I feel like I would lean the Oilers, but I, I have to say I kind of um, neglected my Panthers position for the last what two weeks now, since they've gone up three Oh, I just kept feeling saying to myself, well, you know, it's a good spot to be in. We'll get, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And somehow we're finally here. So um, essentially my hedge has been that McDavid uh, con Smythe that I've, that I've hit a number of times. So in terms of side, if I had to pick it, I'd pick the oil uh, Oilers for the kind of the reasons Nick said, but I probably won't be touching um, the money line itself. I have, I have a little more interest in the total. I think that it, the trends have caught up here, right? What Nick, you said with the fact that this, big, big, you know, minus money price you're paying uh, on the under five and a half. I would argue of all the strong game six and seven trends towards unders, if there's a a team or a game 
that would have the formula to still go over. I think it's these two. When you talk about best player in the world, plus Connor McDavid, leave off, right? Because Ocposo for sure. Um, you know, but but also too, just the fact that Bobrovsky and Skinner could both combust at any point. And um, I think that the the whistle is obviously going to matter, but Florida has been so stale on the power play. Edmonton has almost treated it like uh, an opportunity for themselves when, when Florida gets the power play. So I actually, in terms of the number, I don't quite see it um, for the total. I, I think that this has gone so far in one direction that I wouldn't blame you if you played the over um, on the game. I think if I was playing the under and interested in the under, I, I'd be playing the first period under. It's still like around the same range, minus 140, minus 150. Um, in game six and sevens, this playoffs first period under 11 and two. So I feel a little bit better about that if I was going to play it. So I would say my, my first like official pick here in terms of totals and, um, you know, keeping it more of the broader range would be, uh, lean towards the game total in, uh, about a half unit play on the first period under. Yeah, I was, I was actually just going to say, I think that the first period under is at minus 138 on FanDuel. I think that's that's solid. That, I think that's definitely better. Than, and I'd prefer even at dead even prices, the first period under, I think. So um, definitely agree when you're getting a slightly better number, that would be the way to attack it. I just feel like we've seen the same thing so often. Both teams always come out a little nervy, a little tight, just try to make really simple plays. At this point, everyone's so locked in. The tension to detail should be pretty high. I still don't think Bob is playing that bad either. They're just not doing what they were doing defensively and the Oilers are just rolling. So I wouldn't, and obviously Bob's going to be something I think we dive into here. He didn't practice on Sunday. Oh, yeah. Who knows? I am I think we'd be probably hearing about it even more if it was anything else, but it is kind of crazy. I don't think there's any world where you turn to Stolars here, but it's kind of a crazy spot if he's actually pretty dinged up. Yeah. Um, who's Nugent Hopkins, Bobrovsky were the the two missing parties from practice for, for either side. And it didn't seem like anybody was uh, too concerned about either of them, but who knows? Uh, one thing I will say is I'm not going to be playing. Unfortunately, the, uh, the zero zero it's come down to like plus 300 plus 310. Um, just, I'm a man of principle. That bet's not supposed to be down there. Um, so it was fun. It was a fun ride. I'm not going to do it. What I am going to do, though, is play um, an alt line. I actually think what we see, and this, uh, I'm going to use your point to, and build off it, Nick. Teams are nervy. Getting to a game seven, like there's going to be anxiety, whatever team it is. But usually what happens in these situations, um, especially in like a – Stanley Cup final game seven uh, in the past few one team one team exhales right like they get a goal something happens they exhale and the other team just is so tight trying to catch up to them I think we've seen that a lot over the past few games with the Panthers being the team that has just been tight and the the, the dam breaks for the Oilers first and and Florida's left playing catch up uh, if you look at the past couple of Stanley Cup final game sevens, uh, the the Blues and Bruins was the last one. That one ends four one. I think to the one right before the the previous one before that was also with the Bruins. They ended up winning that one four nil against the Canucks. Um, even if you and then you go back to game seven of the uh, two thousand nine Stanley Cup final, which was tighter. Like the, so, uh, it was ended up being two one for the Penguins and a, and a crazy finish, but. My point is that – and then you go to 2003, it was 3 nothing. So three out of four of them, not blowouts or by any stretch, but it wasn't a you know one-goal game, last gasp, you know, this, this game's going to overtime situation. I think what ends up happening is just like one team ends up uh, relaxing because they, they score first, they get a bounce, whatever, and the other team doesn't, and, and there is an expiration date on their season. So, like, they're pl- racing against the clock. They're racing against the other team. So, I actually think that if going for, like, a, I think the Panthers minus two and a half or minus three and a half is what I likely will be giving out later as my favorite bet. Um, because I do think that if they are the team to exhale here or they do score first, I think that things can, um, 
the, the, the like the dam could break for them in a big way. Uh, it just hasn't. They haven't had a chance to be in like a positive game state in so long. It's it's been really tough for them. So that's where I'm going. I, I do expect most of most uh, of the casual money, most of the betters to to be uh, most of the tickets to be on the Oilers here, and and you can't blame anybody. Uh, but I do think that a Panthers blowout is the, the one that I I want to bet into the most. I don't really. I just. I think that's the way to go down with the ship here. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I think, uh, you know, you get like nine, nine to one on minus three and a half or, you know, something obviously a little shorter on minus two and a half. That's where I'm going to be going. Um, so we'll go, go down swinging here. Let's talk uh, some player props. Nick, we could start with you. Um, goal scores, shots, saves, all saves, Stolars, shutout. What, what are we thinking here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not... I, like I think you're looking at unders. I think it, like it's fun to throw some goal scores around here, but it's not a great spot. I like some of the. I think some of the depth Oilers are playing really well. I think I'd still rather take a shot on Connor Brown plus nine fifty, maybe Holloway. I think someone like that, if you just want a little action, I, I think is better than. I, I wouldn't hate Nuge, but I feel like. The top guys in this spot, such a bad price, and I, I'm not expecting a lot of goals. I was just, I think, even at mine, just 155, probably leaning towards the under. So I kind of like that. I don't mind Reinhardt under on shots either. We won that one last game. I think that right now, it's just, it doesn't really feel like he's getting many touches or really getting close to how many attempts or to many attempts. So I think that number is still just a little inflated because of what he did all season. And we've seen. In series shot trends, like on these unders, and it actually, I, I feel like some people played Tarasenko every single game in the series and won. But on the unders, it feels like they've been pretty good. On like, if if you see a series following a script and guys just not getting many looks, it seems like it has been a pretty solid rule. So I think at plus one ten for Reiner to go under two and a half, I like that as a shot prop. Yeah, it's it's funny because it's kind of like a our Super Bowl or our moment in the spotlight as a kind of standalone sport here. And the unfortunate reality is like it's hockey's different and we can kind of expect a low event, you know, in terms of the, the, the scoring and the shots and things like that, where it isn't a lot of, Hey, take this, like this guy could have a 110 yards in this game, seven catches, right? Like that's, that's not, um, that's just not what really happens in hockey, especially in these game six and game sevens. Uh, Nick, I, I cherry picked this from you last game and I talked about it what felt like a week because of that's how long it was between games, but the Stuart Skinner under, under saves it's 26 and a half again. Um, that to me is another way to get at this, uh, lower event without having to totally, um, put my neck on the, on the total goals. So I like over or excuse me, under Skinner, 26 and a half saves for all the same reasons, right? We, we think it's going to be played in, um, you know, telephone booth. And then I still believe that Skinner has the chance to combust at any moment for what Leboff was saying. Like, if you want to bet into that Panthers two and a half, three and a half, that this would certainly help that as well. So that, that would be uh, my favorite player prop. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give out a first goal scorer for both, uh, one from each team. I'll start with the, the real long shot here. I like Broberg at 80 to one. I know he's not getting too many shots on goal, but he looks effective. He does have a goal in this series, and I don't know. He scored it off someone's ass. I don't. It's not like he made like a great play. It just bounced in. But uh, I do believe in him, and uh, as like just a having some offensive upside from the blue line. And he's eighty to one. Um, he's he had a shot on goal last game. He's got a goal here. Uh, he's he's playing just about you know middle middle pair minutes. So it's not like he's not on the ice. You think he's third in terms of time on ice behind uh Bouchard and Ekholm for, for for the for the D right now so uh he he it's not like he's doesn't play he plays with good players out there cuz they trust him so Broberg at 80 to 1 uh is one of them and then for the Panthers I'm going to go with uh someone who has really struggled not just this series I would say I think he's just been relatively quiet all playoff uh, that's Brandon Montour he's drifted out to 41 uh, to one for first goal scorer. I know he's he was taken off the first power play unit, and the power play has been abysmal, but he activates more than any d- defenseman in the series outside of Bouchard, I would say. So he, and he is still getting shots on goal. He's getting 
um, just under two a game. So I like Montour as well in terms of uh, first goal scorer, long shots. Um, those are going to be the guys I would go with. And, you know, obviously if you want to play, you can also play the anytime goal scorer on them as well. If you want to uh, not lose your bet right away when Connor McDavid <laughs> scores or something, <laughs> you'll still get a good number. Montour's eight to one. Um, Broberg is 16 uh, for that. Okay. I feel um, that way about any... uh, forcing uh, Leboff. Um, yeah. Sim- similar handicap with that uh, longer shot guy. Guy spends half the game on the ice, and we know what he's done done for Florida. So it's. I want to say there were time on ice over unders, um. Last year in the playoffs for Game Sevens, because uh, I wish I could parlay like thirty plus minutes on a few guys, and <laughs> I know it'd be like you know, Obviously, they would see it coming, but. Uh, I don't, yeah, like you said, I think Forsling is, is going to be out there all night. Um, okay. Before we get out of here, any other kind of betting angles that you think are actionable? I don't want to get into like, you know, legacy or is this the biggest choke ever that there's a million other podcasts you can listen to for that stuff? Uh, Nick, any, anything here on like a, perhaps something, you know, I don't, I don't think people are talking. I think that's one reason I like the, the blowout angle here is is no one's going to be talking about it like that. No one's going to be saying, oh, "I expect the Panthers to come out of the the from the first whistle and just blow the doors off the Oilers." This is going to be a, this is going to be a terrible game. Like um, that's just not going to happen in a game seven pre in a pregame. So, um, what other angles do you think that betters can exploit that aren't getting uh, talked about too much? I think the last one that is kind of actually it was your take entirely from the start, and I've come around that I think you're right about it is if and i the part of the reason i like it less is i i like the oilers chances in this who knows it could obviously go either way but that this is one way you could attack the panthers is that ekblad stanley cup handoff plus 650 i think that we'll see this could go either way and you could sit here and analyze this for an hour but he does wear an a he's been there much longer i know if you look at it historically there has been a pretty firm trend of the longest tenured player in the league getting it as if they haven't won a cup, which would be Calo Pozo on the Panthers. Um, but with that said, it seems like Ekblad means a lot more to the organization and in the room. Who knows? Like, I feel like at this point, like that one looks a little off to me. It's hard to say, but you're completely just guessing. But it feels like that's just such like he hasn't even played all the games this year. Like, I don't even know. I don't think he'd even want that. Right. Like it feels a little more natural to me to just let the guy who's been there and who's so important in the room have his moment. Um, I don't think any of them actually care and they're all not going to be selfish about it if they get there, but it feels probably like plus six fifties, a little long on that. Um, and I don't think, I don't know if it'd be Bobrovsky either. Like, I feel like, it just that seems like a bit of a reach just on saying because he's been so important during the run. It feels more like you'd be going with the guy who is again an assistant and has been there through some tough times. So yeah, I I think that you're right on on the Ekblad one at least seeming a touch long. Yeah, Nick, uh, I I love that one or leave off too because uh, on top of all that, it, it plays into the aspect of even if Ekblad has you know kind of fought it for the past couple years and has not I guess he's not lived up to he hasn't been I I compare him a little bit to like a Darnell nurse right he kind of he kind of is the one that one that wears it when when you know things go poorly on the defensive end but that doesn't mean that the guys in the room don't absolutely adore him right it's kind of a similar sense with nurse and I I think the best part of it is you could get Ocposo going out there going no 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 not me first. When are you like those Islanders leave off, right? They're such good guys. They're so selfless. Um, I, I could see something like that happening. So that is also just an incredibly fun bet uh, in the room with other people to say that you. I have. was just gonna say I think I think we should say who you guys think is getting it for the Oilers. I because that one's close. I think so. Tomorrow will be twelve or thirteen years to the day that the Oilers drafted Nuge, uh, or I should say Ryan Nugent Hopkins. So he has seen some stuff with that organization. Um, that one is tempting. I don't know. Obviously, Dry Settle is so prominent to the team and also wears a letter, but I kind of feel like it might be Nugent Hopkins for the Oilers, but I don't know. That one, oh, I'm... Where's that? Where's, so, you know what's funny there is like we're... 
we're talking about uh, the Oposo factor for <laughs> for the Panthers. Where's the Adam Henrique like love for for the Oilers, right? Like you want to, you could completely flip the narrative on this case uh, uh, that like we're talking about with Ekblad and say, okay, like if it is the most prominent, if it's the guy with the longest longest in the tooth in terms of like games played in the NHL that hasn't won a cup, if for the Oilers it would be Henrique, right? By... I was just going to say, Mike, from what you've just said, I feel like you're sprinkling the 100 to 1, 100%. But I agree yeah. with you. And the one thing, Corey Perry like has would, the I cup. would go the exact, it's weird, like, but I would say for this market, which is a strange market, you have to do some digging or live in Canada to find it. <laughs> you're, you're betting against the narrative with the Panthers, and then you would be betting into it with the Oilers. Like, it's it's a funny thing here because like i i like i i would have such a hard time deciding between dry and nugent hopkins all things being equal i think one way to break the ice there and to not have to choose is just be like oh we're just giving to get a give it to adam henrique he's been around forever so um uh, i'll add uh one more fun market uh last goal score um perfect yes because last goal score of the nhl season which they hang they they dangled this in front of uh, before opening night. Oh, I know, right? Um, that would be fun. Um, if you if you're someone who is on like likes McDavid had to have a big game, you can get him last goal score a nine to one out there for the empty netter. Um, you know, Leboff, you alluded to some of these uh, game sevens and Stanley Cup being uh, you know uh, higher scoring in terms of margin, um, which so we saw empty netters in in a, a number of these. So. Um, I don't mind those at all. I think of, uh, I'm looking at a McDavid nine to one and like I see a Kachuk like 15 to one. So, uh, you can also go longer too with defensemen on the ice, like a Bouchard or a Montour or something like that. But I love the idea of last goal scorer, um, as well. If you're really trying to get into the mix, I think if I, I think I'll be betting McDavid nine to one last goal score. Yeah. I like yeah. McDavid. He's been, they've been really consistent with trying to keep their big dogs out, uh, to close out games more than anyone else it feels I and mean, we saw mcdavid had the empty netter obviously in in the last game in florida so and it could work to a uh to like a, a florida lead in and oilers pull the goalie all that and you know it, it becomes four three on a mcdavid final goal so something something like that uh okay so let's uh quickly we'll go around the horn um but before we do that, yeah, like exact score props too. Uh, if you're going to be betting them, I would just bet the um, you know the wild ones here. If you, if if you're into it, six ones, four nothing, stuff like that, um, as well. Because it doesn't have to be a, a classic. It doesn't have to be a, a low scoring, two one typical game seven um, that you think of, because that's not really what happens um, generally in in these game seven and Stanley Cup finals, at least of late. Um, in a whole, whole four game sample size that I've alluded to, <laughs> but those are the last four since 2003. Okay. Um, if you had to give out a best bet, um, for this, the final game of the season, Tim, uh, what would you, what would you tag as your favorite bet? I'll go with that. Uh, that first period under a goal and a half. I think that that's my favorite way to get at the, uh, the lower scoring, uh, game script without having to uh touch that total it's uh that's very very juicy on the under five and a half so under one half goals for spirit nick yeah i like it and i'm just gonna go with the oilers to win the game i think to minus 110 solid play i i I actually i could see the oilers getting moving here i I feel like they might get steamed tomorrow we'll see yeah i i would think they will i'm gonna go against you and i'll say panthers minus three and a half at 11 to one um, is my favorite bet for Game 7. I think that we could see this team just take an exhale and do kind of what the Golden Knights did to them uh, in Game 5 last year. We'll see. That's a uh, fitting but that will do end to for... line change, Leboff. That's a, fi- that's a fitting yeah, exactly. end. exactly. <laughs> well, well, yes, yes. An end until the, um, let's call it, you know how sitcoms do Christmas specials. We'll do a, we're going to do a, a draft episode. Uh, NHL draft betting, obviously, is huge business around these parts. We could, so. we could throw out a quick look into, we could say favorite cup outright for next year as of now. Yeah. We could put that in that Yeah, we can, we could definitely wrap that in. I mean, hey, I think for our draft episode, if we did one, Nick, and in my head I can see it. So if we didn't do one, this is sad. But I, I remember people getting hyped about the, the Blue Jackets because they got Damon Severson and 
uh, Severson and, and uh, Provorov. And we're like, I don't know about that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into, we can get into a look ahead um, as well. Talk draft uh, betting because it's a fun thing to bet. It's on a Friday night and we'll all be watching. So uh, until then, for Nick and Tim, I'm Michael. Thank you for listening to us. If you've been with us all season, a uh, special thank you to you. Hopefully we've we've helped you uh, enjoy the season uh, a little bit more than you did before you found us. Uh, and please, if you did enjoy the ride, uh, rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, etc. cetera. Uh, thank you to our producer, Noah, who's been with us all season for all the hard work. Um, and best of luck, everybody, for Game 7. We will see you again in a couple of days and then not again until the fall. So uh, get a little crazy on, on uh, Monday night.